Where I think 3D ultrasound or volume imaging of the liver does have some role to play is in multiplanar imaging. Those of us who've been doing CT for many years, as I have, remember back in the days when all images were obtained in the axial plane. And you might look at an image like this and wonder if this centrally located structure, shaded in dark brown, is shaped round or whether it's elongated. And if we looked at several slices, either cranial or caudal to the first slice and saw the same structure, we could build that picture mentally in our mind and realize that we're looking at an elongated structure. But that was done internally. We would have to figure that out. Well, with multiplanar reformatting, we don't have to think as hard because we can look at that structure in a plane that wouldn't be normally uh, accessible to us. With so-called isotropic CT imaging, where every voxel has the same or nearly the same resolution, we can produce images in any arbitrary plane we want with the same resolution as the originally acquired plane. And that's a very helpful thing to do. So we produce these beautiful images such as a sagittal reconstruction from a CT angiogram showing the aorta all the way from the thorax through the abdomen into the pelvis, seeing the skeletal structures and other structures exquisitely. And the same thing applies to this coronal reconstruction. Now I have to say when we began doing routine coronal reconstructions on CT about five years ago now, I was quite skeptical about it and didn't think that these images were going to add any useful information. I was wrong. I routinely look at these images now and often find things or clarify relationships that wouldn't be apparent from just the axial images. So looking at images in various other planes that are different from the acquisition plane is all about clarifying relationships between one normal anatomic structure and another or between an anatomic structure and something that's abnormal. And here's an example from CT. This is an axial CT image of the hepatic dome and you can see several hepatic metastases in the dome but there's also an ovoid structure here and just looking at this image or even scrolling through the data set, it would be impossible to tell where this was located. But reconstructing this in the coronal plane, you can see as pointed out by the arrow and as I'm outlining here, this is actually located above the diaphragm. And that's a pretty routine occurrence with the multiplanar reformatting these days for me doing CT. The other thing that all CT packs pretty much let you do these days with multiplanar reformats is easily link the reformatted planes from the acquisition plane. So for example, on this reformatted coronal image, we can see this white line corresponds to the location of the axial image. And that's a feature I use often as well. So how does this apply to ultrasound? Well, ultrasound's a little bit different. Unlike CT, where we typically acquire in the axial plane and then perhaps reconstruct in other planes, in ultrasound we're used to doing whatever we need by moving the transducer into any plane we want. However, it's not always possible to acquire with ultrasound, even being clever about it, every plane we want. And that's where multiplanar reformatting comes in. This is an ultrasound example that is similar to the co-location that I just showed you on CT, where that white line showed on the um, one image where the um, other image was located. And this is the ultrasound equivalent of a liver. You'll see the crosshairs in each of these images, if you look very carefully, is pointing to this small echogenic structure. And there it is in the coronal plane, which was impossible to acquire directly, and you can see that this is pointing to the same structure so we know what it looks like in all three planes. This happens to be a hemangioma. In fact, this is my own liver, and uh, from uh, these images were acquired about five or six years ago, and I know that it hasn't changed since. Here's another example of multiplanar imaging and its value in liver, and again, this is a 3D process because it's essentially taking the 3D volume data set and looking at, dissecting it in different planes. As I put this into motion, you can see an area in the gallbladder here. Here is the acquisition plane that's thickened. This represents gallbladder tumor. 
Now next to it, you can see this area that's hypoechoic within the liver. And you can sort of tell that this may be close, closely located to this area of thickening. But as this goes back and forth in the reconstructed so-called C-plane, you can see that this area of decreased echogenicity is contiguous with the area of thickening. And this represents local extension of gallbladder carcinoma. So again, it's all about clarifying relationships. As I said earlier, however, despite anecdotal accounts of how effective a technology is, it's important to validate that in controlled studies. And therefore, it's important to look at what the literature says. Unfortunately, when you look at 3D ultrasound in the liver, there's really not very much there. There's really a relative handful of articles of 3D in the liver. In fact, that applies to the overall applicability of 3D in the abdomen. Here's one study from 2009 from a group in Italy, and they used conventional and volume ultrasound to look at focal liver lesions and found that the two techniques were roughly comparable. Most of the few articles that do appear in the literature talking about 3D in the liver really refer to contrast. And unfortunately, in this country, contrast ultrasound is still not FDA approved. My hope is that within the next year or two that'll change, and I'll have more to say about contrast momentarily. But here's one such article from 2010 where they talked about 3D ultrasound with contrast and talked about how this technique could help differentiate focal liver lesions by looking at them in three dimensions and looking at their contrast enhancement patterns in three dimensions rather than two-dimensionally as we're used to now. I mentioned before two elements of accessibility and I'd like to return to this for just a moment or two. The first was cost, the second was ease of use. Return on investment is extremely important these days and to hospital administrators who control the purse strings when you're trying to upgrade or buy new equipment, they're going to ask two questions. The first is, can you be more efficient? Can you do the same number of patients or even more patients in the same amount or less time with 3D? And the jury is still out of, on this. Even in fetal imaging, I don't think it's been conclusively proven that you save time. There's certainly some controversy about this. Some people say you do and some say you don't. But certainly in the abdomen, there's very little to show that 3D makes you more efficient. There have been a few time motion studies that suggest that it may be by allowing you to acquire volumes and then process them offline and get the next patient into the room to scan, but it certainly hasn't been conclusively shown yet. The second is, can you reduce FTEs? If you can be more efficient, perhaps you can do so with fewer sonographers and other personnel. And clearly that has not been shown yet either. The second aspect is ease of use. And as I mentioned previously, it's all about the user interface. This is one of our 3D ultrasound workstations that you see with the diagnostic imaging panel here on the right and the 3D panel here on the left. I think that the ultrasound and PAX vendors have a way to go before this technology will be as easy to use and as accessible from a user interface perspective as it needs to be. The other element that I've talked about in previous 3D presentations relates to the lack of what has been called killer apps in other areas. A killer app is generally defined as an application and this was a term that was famously used by Bill Gates at one point, so it, apl it applies primarily to the computer industry, but I'm using it to apply to ultrasound as well. A killer app is an application that is so intriguing, so compelling, so great, that it basically drives adoption of the underlying technology platform. And I'd like to conclude by talking about two potential killer apps for 3D ultrasound in the liver.